Hello everyone, I'm starting a side project of building a low-cost differential wheeled robot that can be used for testing advanced SLAM, machine learning and obstacle avoidance algorithms. My goal is to build a low-cost mechanical platform consisting of low-cost wheels, DC motors and motor drivers. This low-cost platform should be controlled by using Arduino and Raspberry Pi. Also, one of the main goals of this project is to integrate the complete system once we build it with Robot Operating System or ROS. The plan is to add several advanced sensors to this platform such as depth camera, SLAM, etc. with the goal of building a system that can be used to demonstrate advanced machine learning, SLAM and model-based control algorithms. The type of mechanical platform is less relevant for this project. Since this problem is not so attractive, we just need something that will move when we send commands from Raspberry Pi or Arduino. Our main focus is on advanced control and machine learning algorithms. Consequently, I didn't want to waste time building the robot chassis and the robot platform from scratch. My main focus will be on machine learning and SLAM algorithms. I was searching for a low-cost two-wheel drive robot platform or robot chassis that can move. That's enough for me for the time being. After spending some time searching for different options on Amazon, I found this low-cost product. It's a smart robot car chassis that costs less than $15. Here is how the complete chassis should look like after we put all the parts together, that is, after we assemble everything, this is the top view and this is the bottom view. This is basically all I need. On top of this chassis I can put Arduino, Raspberry Pi, different camera and different sensors. Here we have a battery pack, we can also change this battery pack. Also below we can put encoders. Inside of the box, you will first find this baseboard or the platform with mounting holes. These mounting holes can be used to mount the battery pack, Arduino, Raspberry Pi or different sensors. Then you will see two wheels. These wheels are attached to these plastic parts. Inside of these plastic parts, there is a gear reducer. The motors go inside of these plastic gear reducers and note over here that I soldered these connections. The motor comes without soldered connections and that's the challenge. If you don't know how to solder, be careful. Then inside of the box you will also find this battery container. It contains one, two, three, four battery slots and every battery slot can accept 1.5 volt battery. Then you will see these two plastic parts that are used to secure the motors. Then you will find a set of screws and some small pieces used to mount different parts. Then you will have this caster. The caster is placed over here and you can see the final sketch from below and from the top. We have two wheels over here and we have caster. Then you will get a small bag with these parts. First you will see a small on and off switch that needs to be connected. Then you will see these encoder discs. However, here's one important thing that I need to mention. This robot chassis doesn't come with encoders. You need to buy encoders separately. And you have these mounts. To make this robot platform functional, you will definitely need a motor driver. And this is a standard motor driver for these type of low-cost motors. The product number is L298N. Know that this motor driver doesn't come with the robot platform. Then you will definitely need Arduino, Uno or Mega 
to control the system and on top of that you will know you will need definitely other parts such as Raspberry Pi etc then you will also need batteries Note that you can change this battery container you can use for example lithium ion recharge rechargeable batteries the first step is to build these motor connections that is you will need to solder them in the sequel I explain how to do that again here's another test I want to build this connection for my DC motor that will be used for a robotics project the temperature is 352 Celsius Here it is. Here's the outcome. Not too bad, right? Looks okay for a complete beginner as I am. Once you solder the wires, you need to test the connections. And the best way to test the connections is to use a simple power supply that you can see over here and to adjust the voltage to, let's say, 5 volts. And then connect the alligator clips coming from the power supply to the motor and let's see what happens. The motor should spin. Perfect. Here it is the motor spins. Next, we need to do that for the second motor. Let's do that. Here's the second motor. And let's test the connections. Okay, perfectly. Everything works as expected. Now, you can do a few tests. Notice what is, what's written over here. Here we are applying 5 volts and you can see that we are drawing a current of 0. Point, let's say 1 amps. See what if you apply a load over here, you can see what happens. We are getting up to 0. 0.3 amps, so be careful about that. You definitely need to put insulations over here. Once you solder the connections, it's very important to properly isolate the wires. And for that purpose, you can use heat shrink tubes. Here I purchased a set of heat shrink tubes and you can pick one as you wish. Here I picked one of the heat shrink tubes and let me explain you how to use them. Ideally, you need to apply a heater over here. Since I don't have a heater at hand at this moment, I will use a simple lighter. However, be careful when using a lighter. And don't use a lighter, purchase a heater. I will just apply from the side. Watch out not to burn your hands and don't use the lighter. <laughs> that is, don't try to do this at home. Okay, you can see now that, watch out, it's very hot. That it shrinked, the tube shrinked, and it holds the wire. Okay, let me do it a little bit more. Okay, not bad. You need to repeat this procedure for the second wire and for the second connection. Here I'll be using a green one. And you can see how nicely the tube shrinks. That's why I like them. They're perfect for these type of projects. Here, I don't like the fact that this part is still visible. Consequently, I will take another tube to fix it. Let's do it. Let's see how we can fix it. Don't worry if you make a mistake. 
everything is fixable. Okay. Here it is. Watch out, it's hot. And you can also from this side apply it. Perfect. After you do this, double check once more if the motor is working or not. It should be working. Yes, perfect. Let's repeat this process for the second motor. Okay, first connection. And let's test the second connection. Actually, let's apply the heat shrink tube to the second one. And finally, let's test our motor. It should be working. Okay, it's working. In the second tutorial part, I will explain how to properly attach DC motors to the motor drivers and how to control the complete system by using Arduino Uno or Arduino Mega.